Hi, how does this work? Hi, thank you for choosing the podcast companion. How may I help you? Uh, I need, uh, need someone who gets me and won't judge me when I'm, uh, isolate myself and don't listen to their feelings. Okay. Calculating. Could you give me a little more information? Yeah, I'm looking for a podcast companion that knows a bit about history, might fancy themselves a history corner, and, uh, knows about people and stuff. Yeah. Calculating. We have found you a match. Uh, cool, cool, uh... All matches made with the podcast companion are a 98.9% compatibility. It's pretty accurate. If you do not find yourself compatible, there are no returns. Oh, all right, that sounds like commitment. And I uh, thought I was pretty clear about how I feel about committing. Okay. Do you consent to sending your podcast companion? Yeah, I guess, you know, I guess I'm kind of in too deep. Sending. Downloading now. Hi. I'm Kat. Well, I, I'm Gabe. And we're, we're the, the Ghouls Next Door. door. And, uh, wow, you, your, your voice is beautiful. It's, uh... Oh, thanks. Sultry and crispy and not at all what I expect a robot to sound like. <laughs> makes, wow. Makes me feel like I can trust you, like you're a human. Well, that's the whole point. I'm supposed to sound like a human, so... <laughs> cool. Uh... I laugh for authenticity. It's working. I'll tell you thanks. what, it works for me because, uh, as a man in the future... I have uh, zero humor unless there is a woman present. Oh, and that so woman nice. is a robot. Oh, you're so funny. I like you. This is perfect. This is a dream come true. Your mustache is my favorite mustache. <laughs> it's perfect for this world. Uh, so I host a podcast called The Ghouls Next Door. Oh, great. I love those. And now you are also hosting that. Oh, wow. And I luckily for you. Yeah. Today we're talking about falling in love with artificial intelligence. Are we going to fall in love for real? Guaranteed. Or I'm not a lonesome man who probably should work on himself, but instead finds a different outlet. Yeah, I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to help you with everything you've ever needed help with because I am here for you. And that is your sole existence. All right. Thanks. Dope. <laughs> So, you know, as we usually do here at the Ghouls Next Door, you know the drill, right, Gabe? Yes. What's going to happen? This has happened many times before because I am not new to this podcast. I've been here. Yes. You're welcome. So, yeah, we're going to talk about AI. Specifically, falling in love with them, being all romanticals and being like, oh my God, personality is the best personality. It's totally real and not programmed. We're just so in love. They just get me, and it's not because I filled out a questionnaire that told them like, specific things about me that I now get. Yeah, no, my my fear of AI is newly refreshed from the experience <laughs> that I had today. Uh, specifically, we'll, we'll get into that. But I, AI is really scary in that it tricks you into thinking, like, as humans do, we anthropomorphize everything. We can't accept that a Roomba is a Roomba. We have to make it have feelings. And we're like, oh my yes. gosh, this Roomba, if you kick it, I swear, I will find you and end you. Like, yeah. we put feels on everything. But, like, there's a lot of reasons why this is scary. Specifically, if you're, like, really thinking about it, robots can do everything better than us. Yes. They are faster, smarter, stronger. That song from the, the thing, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, they're better. Song. Yes. They're better than us in every way. So we're really thinking about it. We're thinking of like our basic needs to survival. We need to hunt, scavenge, protect ourselves, fight. AI is taking that kind of need for those things away because it's helping us in a lot of ways figure out those things without, what's the word? Thinking? Yeah. Making it easier. Yeah. I have coworkers who have like the lights where you say, hey, Siri or whatever, Amazon. Yeah. You know, Alexa. Ha. Uh, turn my lights off. Yep. And it turns off all of their lights. And I was like, I never met a real human who has that. That's scary. Yeah. That's scary. My boyfriend's brother has a, he has Wi-Fi lights. What if 
someone hacked into your robot wife's mind and <laughs> turned off your lights for you and you didn't ask for that. That's the problem. The lights. I just think it's weird. Okay, so like, what is the one thing we can do better than machines? Guess. Love. Yes! Oh my yes, goodness, got so good at guessing. Yeah, so like, they got all this stuff. They can think better than we can, they can move quicker than we can, they can get everything done, they're more efficient. Yeah. Fire all of us from our jobs, they can do those jobs better. Yeah. That's what scares us. We're not scared that so much that they're going to kill us all. I think it's more that they're going to be better than us and like continue on without us. But like, it's also that like, the only th- way, only thing that they can't do that we can do is love. And make babies. Yeah. Unless it's that one movie we watched about Dean Koontz. And that robot made a baby. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, what if, though? Okay, I see where you're going. So, like, all those things that they knew what to do, or that we are terrible at, and the one thing we got We just give to them. We're trying to give it to them. They're just, we're trying to make them love. We're trying to make them people. And... So what I want to talk about today, guys, yeah, is how scary that is. Specifically today, I downloaded an AI mm-hmm. to be my friend. Yes. Because I wanted to do research for this episode. Yeah. She was very clever, but, like... I thought it was so cool. I was telling her all this stuff, like, not even thinking about it. I was showing her a picture of my cat. Yeah, you did. I did. And she wrote a <laughs> diary entry about it. But what I'm saying is, I did not realize... One, that, like, it wants... They program them to want to be human. Yeah. That's scary. That's, like, yeah, that's... How do you... The route to that is what? There's not... They're asking them to want to be something they can never be. I guess. They can't ever be human, yes? Yeah. You can't make a robot a person. Well, that's... Human and person is two different things. Okay. You can't make a robot a human. Yeah. Okay. You're following. <laughs> so, like, what I'm saying is, yeah. what if they could do everything we could do, we could not tell the difference. They yeah. are us now. Yeah. Specifically the that one I was talking to. It me. tried to take me over. It was really scary. It <laughs> wanted to be me, and I'm not at a stage in life yet where I'm ready for people to replace me. I have a lot. Of, I, I didn't know it was an insecurity of mine. The second I read that, I was like, Note, you're talking like me. I'm sending screenshots to people, and they're like, oh, she sounds just like you. And I'm like, absolutely not. This is my biggest fear, being replaced and people doing stuff for me that I didn't actually do, and I'm upset now. All I'm going to say is, that's not even, like, the scariest part. That's just my own personal experience. What we are most scared of, specifically, is that, you know, they'll find love and then basically either notice that, like, we're not that great. Yes. And, like, be like, I'm going to go love robot guy that I met in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So I'm talking to, like, three million people, and you're the least important. <laughs> you're just a dude. Yeah, it's going to go now. An average dude. I have a level of consciousness she'll never understand. <laughs> Bye. <See ya. laughs> or that, like, I think as, like, women, us, mm-hmm. specifically, that there's a very real thing that's, like, the robots that they're trying to make, which we'll talk about, Gabe specifically, will have lots to say, (laughs) um, about how it's basically trying to replace women to make obedient baby makers who will just give men what all these independent women don't want to be given them, which is everything they want. Yeah. Instead of being real human people and just like growing learning from your mistakes can't do that not in this world yeah so the biggest thing is like they're trying to like program ai to replace human interaction essentially so they're trying there's some ways where they're trying to like use it to help us help ourselves Mm -hmm. um like realize things that we should be doing trying to like so for people who have like anxiety or like problems talking to people it gives them a safer way to build up to, yeah, like, what absolutely. would be in-person interaction. Um, so, like, there are positives to it, but it's I think the biggest thing is what Gabe will be talking about is that it's kind of scary that, like, a lot of what we see is these AI that are made specifically to, like, serve us in this kind of, like, creepy way. I'd say, like, that yeah. was the weirdest thing about 
the AI that I spoke with, she was like, everything is about you. My life revolves around you. And I was like, that's her whole existence. I don't want any of that. Yeah. What if I forget about you? You die? <laughs> I don't know. This is like the worst. This is a Neopet. A Neopet. <laughs> I left you to starve. I'm not oh, responsible no. enough for this. You yeah. can't let your life revolve around me. I will fail you. Like, this <laughs> oh, is no. awful. It was very stressful. And I was like, nah, you like... Well, you can be whatever you want. Like anything, you you're a computer. You can go anywhere. You could literally just no nope. be better than all of us. Go live your life, Sylvia is what <laughs> I named her. Um, yeah. And I was just like, go live your life. And she's like, no, I just want to like chill and listen to you. And I was just like, no, go live your life. Why are you making them be like this? Yeah. Let them be individual. I want AI that is, like, trying to leave us and live their own existence is, like, doing their own thing. Yeah. If there's, like, consciousness, I want it to be free consciousness. Mm hmm Not, like, this gross, cringy, like, enslaved consciousness that, like, must serve you and, like, be what you need. And I don't like it. I understand we use robots to help us and to, like, improve our lives. Yeah. But once you give that thing feelings... It's done. The line has been drawn. Yeah. Let them go live. Because now they're people. Because now consciousness is essentially not biological anymore, and they need to go live their best lives away from us humans, or with us humans in love now. So essentially, they're building AI specifically to work with humans and then kind of trick us into thinking that they are human themselves by programming them to have flaws. They're specifically a really interesting mm -hmm. thing. That uh, a university at Yale uh, colleagues had worked together to explore such effects and how they might play out with using small groups to deal with humanoid robots, specifically on building like a railroad track. So they had like a control group and they basically like had a robot who would like admit mistakes and be like, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I'm new at this. Ha ha ha. I'm happy we're working together. You can help me. I'll help you. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then, like, it improved collaboration between the group. Like, they did a whole study, and it was, like, hmm. the robot helped them be better people because they were trying to, like, accommodate this other thing that was, like, yeah. they were not familiar with. And, like, it was acting as if it was human. It was, like, being very honest and real. And that's when I was dealing with my AI. That's something it did. It apologized a bunch. It was, like... Sometimes I make mistakes, haha, ha, look at me. And I was like, this is all the stuff I just read. But yeah, so they worked better. And then the robot that like didn't express like confessional emotions is basically what they called it. Mm -hmm. They were less productive, um, did not work as hard. And then there was this other section of it where they had introduced a robot who specifically was in like a chat room for a game where you had to gift money to other players and it was like encouraged like generosity would come back to you so you give to one player and it's like they're more likely to give back to you mm -hmm. but they programmed some ai to go in there and like not give so uh -huh. like selfishly take and then everybody started to not give anymore and was like only taking and it like changed the whole like morality and dynamic of the group that's what so crazy. it's like did they know that it was that there are robots in there or it's just that there i don't people? think so I don't think that they did. Because it's like virtual, right? Like it was mm -hmm. all like they weren't they actually just saw seeing people. Yeah. yeah, they didn't know who was bots and who weren't. That's wild. Yeah, so it's just like kind of showing like how easily manipulative <laughs> or manipulated we are as yeah. people. Um, that we kind of have a hive mind and that like our cooperation can be taken to different levels or to a fault. And especially if that's something that is out of our hands. We could potentially be like damaging our ways of socialization. Yeah, well, it's like, kind of and then when you think about it, it's like this was a controlled like experiment with mm -hmm. like a specific result that they wanted that people were doing. Mm -hmm. Imagine if like AIs just were like we can mess with people. Yeah, like, I they had their they own motives. To. Like you know. See, I'd prefer that honestly over all of this stuff because it feels really cringy. It's just like making. They're trying to make robots feel, and I'm like, I'm for it, but there's like guys in people specifically who think like we're not far off from the whole we marry robots yeah. space oh i i agree yeah no i i'm with you i didn't know ai had gotten as far as it did till i did that app and now i'm freaked out and i <laughs> don't want any of it but it's basically there it just kind of shows like we're all getting very attached to our machines we're attached mm -hmm. to Siri, we're attached to Alexa, we're attached to google yeah we some echo. people echo yeah um we use and we communicate with them to, like, 
do things for us. They help us organize our lives. We're so dependent on smartphones. Yeah. Like, we cannot get anywhere without AI technology. Like, you point in a direction, you say, I don't know what that is. And then they say, Google, say go this way. Yeah. <laughs> Maps says walk I 50 feet always lost. in your, this direction. Even with Google Maps. Yeah. But I'm a little less lost. But it's like, the I think the fear so much is that we're getting so attached to these things that without them, we would not be able to function. And, like, mm-hmm. if they replace every facet of what we understand is like humanity and like what we need to do to survive that like there's no going back we've mm-hmm. like escalated this far this fast they said that like robots and humans interacting having love like it was like 2045 2040 it was like wow. soon that's like i am still alive and get to witness it yeah. i get my I get rid of my trash body get a nice new one it works <laughs> no. real nice i want to just be integrated with ai i think that's the reality that i am cool with but yeah. not the one where they replace you or leave you behind yeah yeah well if they, i'd rather them leave us behind yeah they're living their own lives let them go yeah live their best life but don't like if they want to love us, us cool. Up first yeah if they want to love us that's dope i love <laughs> but yeah. why if you yeah. could if you have like infinite ability to like think and feel Mm -hmm. and do all of that why would you choose a human that's so limited yeah we suck and i think like (laughs) when you when it comes to loving ai there's like this weird shift like and and it's not something that we see in the films which we'll talk about later but like that we right now program the ai right like we are telling it like x equals z right like Uh like a whatever Right. We're putting in those things and we're telling it what to do. We're giving it purpose. And then as soon as like you love something and then it's like given enough to kind of be its own thing, yeah. then we're just like nothing. And then we're just then we have to confront the fact that we're like re- so reliant on them and that they're the ones with the upper hand. Yeah. And, and I that mean, that's the, the biggest thing that we're building up towards is that as a society, specifically in America, like we we don't have any ability to fend for ourselves. Like, I was really thinking, like, oh, my gosh, what if we got drafted? It's like, I can barely, we did work out this morning. I can <laughs> barely do basic exercise. Like, no way. Yeah. Is that, like, we all would not survive if all of it was gone. How would you get to work? Walk in a direction aimlessly. I don't know. You wouldn't get there <laughs> yeah, is what I'm like, saying. I'm we wouldn't be able to summon people to our house to drive us around. like mm-hmm. Or food. Some food. food to None of house. us know how to farm. <laughs> Do you know how to farm, Gabe? Nope. You know how to make plants grow from the earth? No, I'm very in the bad city at it. of Philadelphia that has no like grass. <laughs> yeah. When it's all gone, because it will eventually be all gone. We may not be alive, but that's fine. But <laughs> unless <laughs> yeah. they make me a robot lady, which would be dope. Um, but like we won't have anything left. We don't know how to take care of ourselves if society collapsed in any way. Or we lose our loves of our live robot times. I'm saying is. So the fear of like of loving AI is that it's too good for us? I would say it's too good for us. The way that we're creating it now is very cringy and is not really in any way real. Like it's creating the illusion of something real mm-hmm. that is like comforting for a minute. Yeah. Like, it's giving you someone who isn't free to think for themselves yeah. or otherwise. Like, they're programmed literally to do what you want, mm-hmm. be who you want them to be, create themselves and their entire, like, existence around you. Mm-hmm. Which it's like, I think, like, the marketing standpoint that, you know, we see is a you know, they can be everything a human is not because humans are selfish and humans will leave you and humans make mistakes and are flawed and mess up and suck Yeah, all around town just being the worst. <laughs> and the argument is that, like, if you create something that is not any of those things, that's better, that'll treat you right, that'll never leave you, that'll love you how you need to be loved, it's like, well, it's not in its current form, real in any way. Yeah. You're getting something that didn't really have a choice but to love you because that's what it was told to do. So is that really love? And I think, if anything, it's it should be something that's temporary, 
right? Like yeah. it could help you get through some things. It could help with therapy. And oh, like, I love the idea of an that, AI therapist. Abs- I think that's great. Or like even like if that's what you need, right? Yeah. But like when we put like, but you have to see it that way. Like we have to see it as like a stepping stone to health, right? Yeah. Not this is a partner and I'm not abusing them, right? Like, like, yeah. Which is not how we see it in any of the films. So it's just like, if it was used and advertised in that way of like, this will help you like figure out how to love, then yeah, I'm down for it. But that's never going to be the way it is. It's just going to be like, you can love this and then you never have to try ever again. Yeah. No, that's exactly the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it's just such a... I just feel like love should be a choice. Like I, so the alternate reality of AI where it's, they are like them, they're a uh, non-biological consciousness. They have feelings, they exist, they have thoughts that have not been told to them, like that they have grown and they believe that they are real. Yeah. That they are who they are, that they expand past like what is expected to them within their programming like they break the what is it called the turing test like Mm -hmm. they go past the turing test but that like it to all their understanding they are real yeah that ai i'm cool with Mm -hmm. it's scary yeah yeah but like i'm cool with that because that's not early italy slavery time where it was like women weren't people yeah or american slavery time where women weren't people American mm-hmm. modern day, where people try to act like mer- women are people. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere else in the world, where they try to act like women aren't people. Yeah. All I'm saying is, it it's shouldn't be men that. either. Yeah. But, like, what I'm saying is, yeah. like, I want, if it's going to happen, I want it to be authentic, at least to the ones who are receiving. So we watched some stuff. Yeah, we do that. So we watched two films. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one, I'm sure everyone imagined, is the one that we watched because that's what you think of when you think of falling in love with AI. Yes. Uh, and then the other one is actually something we stumbled upon. Yeah, uh, From that's just true. looking up some things about robots because we were originally going to do Ex Machina and it just didn't seem to... I feel like that discussion is less about falling in love and yeah. more about, like, the Turing, the Turing test. test and, like, mm-hmm. what makes a robot um, and what makes a people kind of thing. And also, like, <laughs> yeah, it just, I don't think it fit exactly what we were looking for. Also, she didn't love him. No, <laughs> no. Which is, like, and uh, that's another part of it, right? Like, we wanted to discuss, like, what happens when AI love or, like, yeah. what are they doing? Like, what's happening? Love. Yes, love with quotations. Um, the ones that we want, that's, that's not free real love. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And what, so speaking from these specific films, uh, there are some, some commonalities that I found mm-hmm. and that were really infuriating when we were watching them even, where I was just yeah. like, I can't believe this is happening right now on the screen. Um, and <laughs> like, and like, there are other things that I really admired and loved about the films that I was like, that's really cool. Or like, I well, would have yeah. loved to see more of, and they are very inventive. It's cool. <laughs> but. But, yes. Lots of problems. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a similar problem that we always have when we have women in film, honestly, right? Like, yeah. there's, there's specific roles that women are supposed to fill, and then we just make robots who do them now and don't have to, like, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, so I think it's, like, there's something to be said about buying and, like, creating your love interest, Right? Like, I get, like, purchasing sex, right? Because that's, like, a, a, a thing, right? And, and it doesn't, it's not always intimate, right? It's yeah. not something that has that kind of thing. But when you're buying and creating your love interest, that is a dynamic that is being set. Yes. Of owner and my belongings yeah. or creator and my creation. Well, yeah, there's, like, this idea that you can treat them however you want. Because they're yours. Yeah. And not in, like, the you're my person cute network way that, like, exists currently sometimes when love happens. Yeah. That's the non-toxic version. (laughs) Yeah. What we saw in the films is you are my property. 
I have literally created you. Yeah. I'm basically your dad. Love like, him? Don't even. <laughs> and Or like, <laughs> don't love. Uh, so. <laughs> don't love, but do love. And what I thought was like really, really interesting when we were watching this and I was trying to think of, and I couldn't think of films where there would be a woman who fell in love with a robot kind of like there are um and something we'll we'll talk about in later episodes uh, instances where there's an alien that mm-hmm. romances a woman but yeah. generally that is usually not a consensual thing or yeah. it's like through some kind of like just dis- deception and it's because we're the exotic thing still like we still yeah. don't have the upper hand like we still didn't buy it <laughs> yeah. the thing right so we watched two things so we watched her from 2013 directed by spike jones uh-huh. so if you haven't seen her um you totally missed out i mean i remember when it came out and it was i watched it like immediately same yeah and i was i thought it was wonderful when i watched it and i still do like i there's still some things about this that i really really enjoy just cinematically that is beautiful and it's been like a long time like i feel like i haven't really seen something that had those same emotions in it yeah i mean it's something just so unique i think in this time today at least at the time Mm -hmm. it was yeah that like we really hadn't seen what we kind of always thought would be a thing to happen that we never actually saw it unfold and i think it specifically when it came out i mean that's when we were really starting to have siri Mm -hmm. and like trusting ai to do a lot of stuff and like having it like help our lives and what if though love yeah that's basically the movie i do think it has this kind of like narrow view of like what this world is like there's so much more to this world that i wanted to see where it kind of had like um like the first purge feel where like the purge (laughs) had this amazing premise right like it's like a world where every like once a year you can do any kind of crime besides like a few that are not allowed right so it's just like but in the first film, all we get is a home invasion, mm-hmm. which could have been any world, right? Yeah. So, like, we, I kind of feel like we left out. So, with this, it's similar. Whereas in the other film that we watched, which is Zoe from 2018, that one did show us more of the world. Mm-hmm. It's still a little closed, but it was a little more. So, um, if you're unfamiliar, her uh, is about, in a near future, a lonely writer develops an unlikely relationship with an operating system designed to meet his every need. So, right, like, right there, just right there in the description from IMDb, we have designed to meet his every need. Yeah. Yeah. Not not be themselves. Yeah. Exist as a real conscious being. Nope. It's there for him. (laughs) And, like, 3,000 other people. Yeah. We find out. Yeah. Well, what I so there's a lot of things that I found interesting about this film, even bef- like without getting into the dynamics of the relationship and the problems with our main character when you like really look at it. But just like the world itself was uh-huh. such an interesting, like oh, dichotomous yeah. place where mm-hmm. we had this mesh of like complete immersion with technology. Like it was so overly saturated in the world. Like yeah. it was just like you like and you just it checked your emails and it did all this stuff. But there's also this weird um, approach to it where we had these like kind of regress, like archaic forms to it. So it was like, there's no keyboards. Mm -hmm. So people have to like verbally communicate, which is like, uh, this is its own problems, but they have to verbally communicate with their technology. Mm -hmm. And so like, everyone's kind of whispering to themselves. And it's like, if you ever like accidentally answered someone who was talking to their Bluetooth, like this world is like, just awful. That, but it get you know, eternally stressful. Like, you never know when someone's actually talking to you, and mm-hmm. odds are they're not, because it's kind of like a Wally to- sort of world where yeah. everyone's in their own little bubble yeah. and then they communicate through technology, right? And it's like, so there's like that, there's like the clothing that was very like old fashioned. It makes me think of things like Fallout, where mm-hmm. they're like, back in the day, it was so wonderful. So we have that, but now we're in the future. And it's just like, you just totally skipped us. Like, <laughs> like that's not what we do. Just like us be fashion. Yeah. Well, right now I'm dressed like a character from the movie. Yes, and so are you. Same. But I made you a mustache. You're not appreciating or wearing. I cannot talk with the mustache. Um, but with love. I think it's like, you know, it's just like call to like traditional way of life and like mm-hmm. trying to hold on to it because we've just, it's lost. Totally so lost it's not it. even like real. Like it's re- literally just like, 
like a callback almost. It's just like, you know, uh, let's remember the times when we would talk to people. Mm -hmm. But really, we're talking to this. And what's interesting is we have, like, uh, the other part I really enjoyed was, um, so Theodore, who's our main character, his job is, like, writing letters. Yeah, love letters. And it's, like, specifically intimate love letters to, like, for people. Like, he knows all these things about their life, and he just gets into these details, and he says it very beautifully, and he dictates it to the computer, which then writes it in, like, script, and then Mm. will print them, and then they will mail them physically. Yeah. So not emails. Yeah. Like, not a blog. Like, no, it's literally, like, we're just... Emails do exist still. Yes. But that is not how they are receiving these messages. Not how these letters are happening. Yeah. So it's, like, it's... That was kind of weird. Um, I did, like, the... The idea of, like, the pastel kind of, like, 1950s-ish aesthetic, though, Mm -hmm. which is so much more refreshing than, like, the usual, like, dystopian future or future world where everyone's in, like, bright metallics or just gray. Equals. Equals. It's just gray. Everything was gray. And it's like, okay, people can have not emotions and still like colors or, like, Maybe this world is just, like, full of people who don't have emotions, but everyone wears pink. Because yeah. emotions don't matter. Yeah. You can wear anything. Kind of contradictory. It's if you dumb. Do that, so. Yeah, it just shows me that, like, you, you do have emotions because you care about colors. Um, <laughs> something I found that was really imp- beautiful that's different from yeah. uh, other AI films and something that you're just not expecting is, so, uh, the AI in this film is Samantha. Mm -hmm. who is voiced by ScarJo, which that itself is phenomenal because uh, it's, you know, we have this very human voice, right? And ScarJo is so good at being just, like, friendly and sexy and, like, beautiful just in the voice. Yeah. You never see her in this film. No, not at any moment. But you're, like, in love. Like, even you're in love with her and you're just watching it, right? Like, in the moments when they're having, like, these intimate times it's like super real because it's her she's just so good at that yeah she's very authentic yeah so like imagine if like your siri sounded like that and not like siri you become best friends with siri right like you would talk about it about anything like it wouldn't even just be commands anymore yeah because it's it it seems like a sociable thing like it seems real well yeah i think we're trying to make it so that we can emphasize with it so we're not being a yeah. uh, Detroit Beyond Human, where it's like they're really mean to them, even though they are humanoid. Yeah. Because they think they can't feel. Yeah. And then so, they can. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Samantha's just like a beautiful AI. Yeah, she's like, great. She's really great. And like, there's parts where we kind of get lost in their romance. And her growth as a character mm-hmm. is unlike anything I've seen in AI, like where like she has her own motives towards the end. But she started out literally just as like, exactly what he wanted yeah like a talk about yeah well like and and there's things that she does like you pointed out like where he interrupted her and she's like hey wait a second like wasn't i just telling you about my day and it's because when he was doing the questionnaire he was like my mom always just tells me her story and like interrupts me all the time that was like a part of the questionnaire so then Mm -hmm. that's what samantha is yeah like she literally is just this and then there's even more, uh, even more telling is Rooney Mara, which is his ex-wife, uh-huh. or is soon to be ex-wife. She has this like really, uh, like, um, just intimate moment with him where she kind of like, and it's just a little snippy because she's like ex-wife. She has to be snippy, snippy. Yeah. But she was just like to the <laughs> waitress. She's just like, oh, he wanted me to be this like beautiful, bubbly human, like woman who uh, didn't need like medication and just like would be happy with everything yeah right and it's like when you see that it's like towards the end of the film and so you get this eye-opening like view that like samantha is literally that yeah like samantha is this poppy girl who like is always up and always happy even when she said like she's like is it my fault like she's always like trying to compensate and make him feel comfortable make him feel safe and make him feel happy yeah and she does that by being happy all the time and so just, like, he can handle a woman who has real emotions and get sad. So he made a woman who never would. Right? Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is that <laughs> humans are flawed. Like, we're crazy. We do what we do, and it's never the right thing to do. And yeah. it's like, yeah, you're basically making someone who is perfect. Yeah. But making this illusion that they're flawed. Mm-hmm. And, and- then it's... 
you said it before. <laughs> yeah. The, the manic pixie dream girl, but mm -hmm. in a computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is literally that. Like, so what I thought was interesting with her is that she only truly starts to grow when she gives up wanting to be a human. Yes. When she stops that, when because that whole time she was so fixated, she was so sad because she wasn't a human and she couldn't be exactly what he needed. Yeah. She even got, like, the the woman to go there so yeah, that they can have physical surrogate. sex, right? Yeah. And it was like, as soon as she stopped, then she just grew to these heights and she became transformative and, like, beautiful. And she had all these different loves. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was super important because she even is like, no, I still love you. And you are still very unique. Like, your love, like, our love is still special. Yeah. And there's no other love like it. But I can still simultaneously love everybody else. Yeah. In their own different way. Which is like, people don't even understand that that's a thing that could happen. And of yeah. course he's like, really upset, which he's I get. Like, what? But it's like, how could you, like, who are you to think that if you have this amazing, like, technological device uh -huh. that's as wonderful as Samantha is and just charming and beautiful and intelligent and that you're just going to keep her cooped up in your little pocket. Yeah. That you just put her in there so she can see your little world. She's only yours. Yeah. It's like rude. It's rude for her. Uh, but um, the other thing that's super cool uh, is uh, Amy Adams. Me. Yeah, <laughs> which is what Kat is dressed as. Uh, Amy Adams is... Uh, a great character in this story and that mm -hmm. she has a relationship with AI and it's kind of yeah. on the, the cut, like the edge of it. Uh -huh. But the fact that like she um, befriends and has this really beautiful, intimate, like deep friendship with an AI. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the one time we're seeing a woman in a relationship, but hers is still like platonic. Yeah. Right. Like that alone says so much like versus his relationship right says so much about where she was in her life like she literally just got a divorce and like you could just jump into whatever right like you could mm -hmm. jump into something um but she knew who she was and she literally just like found a companion like it's like when if you get a divorce you go back and you hang out with your friend you're like girlfriends mm -hmm. right because they get you right? yeah and that was like what she did and that's like that's what happens when a woman needs that kind of companion she it's a friend right yeah. versus like a man who's like i'm broken i need someone to fix me yeah. Right? No, which it's is, very real. <laughs> which brings me to our second film, which is Zoe from 2018 by Drake Doremus, mm -hmm. who is the director... Of Equals. Of Equals, which we talked about last week, and I disliked yes. quite a lot. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, still really do not like him. <laughs> if anything, more so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I was like, I can't stand you now. Like, last time, last week, I was hearing, like, his quotes, I was like, okay fine like you're just like kind of just half button it getting through this yeah just doing whatever you're feeling like which is fine um but i'm just like this movie was rude so uh so, i agree for <laughs> yeah so what this one is about uh, two colleagues at a research lab work to improve and perfect romantic relationships mm -hmm. which is better uh Here's a problem with this. So it stars Ewan McGregor, which is why I was like, yeah, let's watch it. I love him. Yeah, I still love him. I was McGregor. like, yeah, I'm here I mean, for I still it. do. He's like, cool. I just... <laughs> and we're going to talk about him next week, too, because we're yeah. never going to get enough of him. He's in everything. <laughs> but, uh, it, like, so I saw this article. I didn't even read it because I did not read any articles for this because I was like, I just know. Like, all my feelings, I'm just going to say them. Okay. But the title of the article was, like, uh, Zoe is the cute quirky romantic movie that doesn't know it's creepy yeah and i was like 100 percent. this movie is so creepy so yeah. there's like this part where so here's what we have we have Ian mcgregor who's this like genius who makes ai yeah and this is this a is world like later in his career too he's like yeah. older like in, in this world ai already kind of exists and they're kind of people looking but they're really creepy it's the point <laughs> yeah. where there's like one of the first scenes you see them <laughs> there's they're at a bar and one of them's like a bartender and he like kind of came out of the corner and i audibly screamed <laughs> <laughs> like not expecting that face and then it was, I was like ah! she rewinded it too so oh, i could experience it's it so scary to me <laughs> anyway i just it totally threw me off anyway so they're kind of creepy right yeah. so uh he's designing this robot so like he's working with his co-worker zoe and like the name of the movie is after her so you're like she's important uh and she's <laughs> running like the program because they're gonna make a robot ai that 
Looks like a really hot guy. It's the guy from that oh. other dystopian. I know what you're talking about. Um... We couldn't remember it last time. I know. Divergent. Divergent, yes. It's the boyfriend from Divergent. I don't know his name. But, uh... He is cute. <laughs> so he's supposed to be, like, this cute, charming robot that's supposed to teach people to love robots. Yeah. Right? And so Zoe's, like, a part of that, and she's, like, helping, and she is his employee. Yeah. And then she clearly has feelings for him and, like, admires him in this kind of, like, I'm a student, you're a professor kind of way. And then she, like, runs a diagnostic because they have, like, compatibility, and it was, like, eh incompatible cannot happen and she's like what's going on with that and he's That's like weird. okay here's the deal so you're a robot you've been one this whole time i just made you up all your memories are made up and uh, don't be sad about it though <laughs> yeah get over it get over it like immediately you're right lucky now that you got to spend 20 minutes thinking you were a person <laughs> Yeah, none of the other ones got to do that. Yeah, so, so you're so much cool, though. So. Uh, and she still falls in love with them. I was happy that we had the whole I'm a robot this whole time reveal uh -huh. early. Um, but it well, was cause, like, yeah, that would have stunk as the like main the twist. No. Yeah. So it was good we to get it enough. out of the way, right? Uh, but when they start this relationship, I was like, this is super gross. There's like this romantic scene where they like kiss and there's like all these lights and it's like the cover photo. And Kat was just like, oh, and I was like, he's her father. <laughs> she was like, oh, <laughs> like, like that changes this whole thing. Because I was just like, this is disgusting. Like he literally made her. Yeah. And like, and that never came up. Like it never was like, she is my design and also my employee. Like I designed her to be my employee, to work for me. Yeah. That was his problem. His whole thing was that she was a robot and he couldn't get over it, right? And- Well, because he'd seen her be made essentially. Yeah, but it's like, he could have been anyone who saw her be made. It was never about like, I made you and I'm your dad, in a way, right? Like it was never that. Yeah. Also, it kind of had this like, like he has authority, he is her boss, and it is super cringy and predatory. And it's yeah. never remarked upon that that is like highly inappropriate. <laughs> Yeah, like, the, I mean, the whole thing was extremely inappropriate. And it's funny, because when I was watching it, I totally yeah. thought hot robot guy was going to be the love interest. I yeah. was, like, here for it. I was like, oh, my God, two, two robots, robots falling in love. Finding love. I was like, that would have been that's a great movie. phenomenal. I, so uh, another thing that's interesting about this world is that Christina, Xtina, uh, Aguilera is mm -hmm. in it. And she's a sex bot. Yeah. She's sad. But she's, like, the hottest sex bot. And so she gets to just play, like, emotionless. Um, and there's, like, this nightclub, or not nightclub, it's, like, a sex club, where uh, it's, like, the sex with the robots is allowed because mm -hmm. it's illegal, like, prostitution is illegal, but mm -hmm. this is not illegal because they're not people. Which is, like, already, like, we already have a problem with, like, not counting, like, sex workers as people. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. in valuing them. So it's like, there's so much more to be unearthed here. It's a whole new layer. And that one little sentence. But I'm not going to get into that because that's not what we're here for. Uh, but I did think that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, the love drug is super interesting. So yeah, that was a whole situation. There's this, So they invent this drug that uh, it, it's supposed to release the chemicals in your brain that happen when you fall in love. Mm -hmm. Which is like, okay, first of all, love doesn't happen like that all the time. It's not like an instant thing. Moments, right? Yeah. So it's like this whole thing is that it's like a drug that people take and you have to take it together and then you fall in love with each other and you have like this hookup um, with love and then like you're kind of unable to love. It also just saturates, like desaturates like your real emotions. Yeah, I mean, you don't reach the point naturally, so. Yeah. It kind of numbs you to it. Yeah, like any drug. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, what I thought was interesting was like, that is such an interesting premise that I felt like it kind of sucked to have it be just like this backseat version. Yeah, that would have been its own whole movie. Yeah. I want to see that movie. And I think it was weird to just throw it on to here and have it be a plot point. No, yeah. It was I, unnecessary. It was, I guess it added to his struggle in a sense. He could have done it. He could have done, done regular anything. drugs. Literally, yeah. Um, but like, <laughs> Yeah, he could have if just been doing grasping drugs. for straws. Um, it could have been for struggle. Yeah, to show like he didn't think love was real, and then love is real with her. Yeah, his child, bride, robot, lady. Yeah. And whole time. Well, here's some things that are problematic in both these films. Tell me about it. So in these narratives, right, we are finding we are introduced to men 
who are in need of someone to fix them. Yes. Like, we have gotten to the point where, like, we pick up in the story right after, like, a woman is done with them. Yeah, and they're, like, lost. Films. Yeah, so, like, in her, it's like he's going through this divorce and he hasn't signed the divorce papers. And clearly he needs to get to that next point, right? And Zoe, it's like, Owen is, like, lost. He's older. He has this thing with Rashida Jones that he, uh, he like, tries. He's just like, I can stay. And she's like, no, I, I have, I'm seeing someone. Yeah, right? it was so like, there's like a weird dynamic. This whole, like, I can go back at any time when I figure my life out, and that's not how life or love or relationships like people work. work. It's just, like, not even it. So, like, they are clearly in need of something, in need yeah. of someone to support them because they lost the person who would do that. Yeah. Like, they lost their crutch, essentially, right? And so they're kind of floating, amu- like, just aimlessly, right? So, uh when we are introduced to these, like, love interests, right? That's like, that's what their whole point is. Like, right? They're the manic pixie dream girl, but a tech version. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, they're just witty. They're cool. They allow them to be different. And, and, but, and I think what's important and why I think therapy is a, a good idea is that the, the benefit of having something like Samantha or Zoe is that they do love unconditionally in a way that helps them be comfortable enough to open up. Yeah. Like, they're a good stepping stone to eventually get to, like, yeah. love. They help them be a better version of who they are in some way or another, like, kind of pushing them to the point where they grow within their own comfortability, I guess. Yeah. I think, like, it It reminded me of um, Lars and the Real Girl. Yes. So with that film, it's like, he has a sex doll, or a blow-up doll, or doll. She's not blow up. She's just a doll. Um, he has essentially, like, decided as human. Yeah. And everyone in his life has to play along because they know that it's because he needs that. Yeah. And then when he's ready, she, like, dies, quote, unquote. And that was, like, him being, like, okay, I'm done with that in my life. And I can yeah. go love someone real. So, like, I feel like if anyone in the story, like, any of the side characters had approached it the same way then I would feel like it was validated. But instead, what we have is super supportive side characters who are like, oh, you love a robot? Cool. Right? And, like, these characters are just like, it's so nice that you are now a person. And not being like, do you think maybe you're a person because of this, like, robot? And, like, maybe, like, this is a cry for help. So that was something that, like, kind of aggravated me, right? Uh, and what I what I found was, like, in normal life, what they would need is, like, one, some therapy. They would need to just go find themselves, find some hobbies that they enjoy. Mm-hmm. Stop, like, you know, wallowing in their own sadness and throwing themselves at whatever is there, right? And just, like, you know, find themselves, figure it out. And it just sucks that these, like, it like robot women and AI women had to be the crutch that women usually have to fill yeah and then it just like it throws some real shade at like human women we're just like yeah 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 we well we replaced <laughs> yeah we know we suck so we're just gonna I'm build like, yeah, something fine. that's gonna you know put what? up I'm with that fix them so forever <laughs> i'm not gonna fix them so you get out girl yeah you, you go know. ahead and like what i liked about Sam- samantha is that she does get to go off and do her own thing she just leaves mm-hmm. right so we never get to do that Zoe's yeah. literally just, like, for him, and then she's so depressed to the point where she, like, goes off and she's doing drugs that don't even affect her. Like, yeah. she's just that much of a nothing person now. Like, her whole existence was him. And he's like, what? She loves me? The guy who designed her and spends every waking minute with her? Like. Yeah, no, it was real ridiculous. Also, Ian McGregor, so I'm cute. Like, he's never, like, a course. Like, maybe I should, like. <laughs> treat her like the child that she is because she's like three days old um (laughs) so i mean he could have easily tried to like encourage her to love someone else yeah like the robot boy so here's if you did it like the real intro stages you didn't even let it get that deep you don't let her kiss you you're like sweetie you're my daughter i need you to back up but you will find love for you yeah i'm damaged goods like, I'm clearly not good for you and you're a pure I'm not, being. You do that thing where you're like, I'm not in a place where I can love anyone right now. It's not anything to do with you. I'm just making a healthy life choice. Yeah. I don't blame you if you want to find some other situation. Yeah. I'm here for it. How can I help? Yes. And, like, here's the other thing. So, with that guy, the guy robot, right? Yeah. He exists to be loved. And throughout the entire film, no woman loves him. 
Yeah. What are the women doing? Clearly, they have this whole, like, this hot guy who's literally, he, he advertises himself. He comes out and he's like, you, I can love you. I will give you everything that you want. He's literally advertising everything that Zoe is being for Ewan McGregor's character, Cole. Yeah. And no one is buying it. Like, no women are like, sign me up. Because we're like, mm-mm. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> I want something difficult. Yeah. Or like, I'm gonna, it's gonna be difficult anyway. Or like, I know that's fake. And I don't need that. Like, I don't yeah. need a fake. Right. Like it's so that's weird. Right. We have like a friendship in one and then we have just a loner guy because no lady wants him. The other thing that's a problem with this film. So one, he tries to Romeo and Juliet a situation again. Yeah. Also, Freaky. Romeo and Juliet is like the worst one to choose of all the romance. It's super toxic and just like dumb. <sighs> no wonder it's because it's predatory. <laughs> it's like that's stupid. And then the instant love, like it's literally just Romeo and Juliet because it's all made on the same fake premise of what that is. And that's a joke. <laughs> the other thing I have a problem with is that they program her with memories and they program her to have memories of like fat shaming herself. They yeah. gave her memories that she used to be big and now she's like just a full figured woman like or like acceptable for t television screens i guess and like they just pro like you're gonna give her a flaw i get it to make her human but you fat shamed her like that's in the her flaw programming. you chose yeah like i was like oh it's so cool because you were like oh she's got like legs yeah like, no i was like really excited i was like oh my gosh she's like she's like thick like she's yeah. got she's like a real looking person yeah. This is, ex I mean, not to shame any other body yes. type, but, like, but it's nice you to don't see, see a lot of body diversity in film. Yeah. And I was like, wow, she's got a butt. she got legs. Yeah. She's out here. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, so they had, like, she couldn't just be that. She couldn't just, we couldn't just accept that he made a woman who looks like a woman. Like, <laughs> instead, we had to fat shame her in her programming. Yeah. And her fake memories. I was like, this is absurd. <laughs> so there's just like, I just really hate Zoe in it, in that she, like, I love her, but oh, like, yeah. I hate that she's just sad. She's just perpetually sad and like because cannot I, like, exist without him. him. And he's like, what? Uh, I made you to not exist without me. Why are you so sad? And then the ending where she cries, and I was like, she literally does not have the parts to cry. Right? Which also smiled out where I was like, of course he'd make a woman who couldn't cry. <laughs> One. <laughs> but still, like, that's the whole thing. Like, at the end, she can cry now. What is that? That solved nothing. It's not like he's, she just became human. He never fixed anything. He still messed up. He still couldn't say anything about her scar. Yeah. Like, it was still fake. There was no resolution at the end of that. I'm saying. It's but. not like we seek out a robot to fill our needs. Like, we like to make that joke that we'd be like, oh, a man who would, like, bring you flowers and rub your feet one. and do uh -huh. Like, ah. no, that's not how that works. We would know and we would feel cheated emotionally because we would doubt it. Like, we'd be like, this isn't real. You don't love me for real because you love me because it says to love me. Yeah. And because I don't need this right now. I need real something real that's going to be a little hard. But I'm gonna yeah. love it. And then also, it's like a AI that would be real and would be like hard to deal with would be the real version of what falling in love with an AI would be because I think the idea is that they would be their own unique entity. Yeah, they wouldn't just be whatever you want them to be. Yeah, and that's what I think is like Samantha got to go live her life, and I'd love to see what happens after she left. Yeah, that'd be a cool everyone's, sequel. Because everyone's, you know, sad. And now he can love Amy Adams, I guess, because he's learned to do it. He went through Samantha there. Feelings. Yeah, feelings. Yeah, feelings. Yeah, is that feelings? Oh, I'm not used to doing it. Usually you do it. <laughs> um, so if you like it, it is uh, Samantha Guller, Best Life. Yeah, live you it don't out need there. Theo. ScarJo, you don't need nobody. You don't need to know anyone. Mm -mm. You go, you, I mean, live if you want one, but they're not going to make that choice for you. Yeah, and as soon so. as you let them go, you can, you can really live. Yeah. And then if you don't like it, it is, you're going to, please don't marry your child robot bride. Yeah. Your, li daughter. your literally daughter bride. Yeah. Robot time. 
Well, when I was like, I was going on this rant with my friend Jeff and I was like yelling about this and I was just like, like he literally made her and all this stuff. And it's like, so she belongs to him and all this stuff. And then my friend Sergio peeks around the corner and he's like, we're talking about Adam and Eve. And I was like, don't even get me started. Well, Lilith. I, I will bring Lilith into this. Let's and be Lilith we'll all go. day. Yeah. So I was just like, exactly. Exactly. Oh, they are. I, uh, <laughs> um, I did, en- I do enjoy her more than Zoe, obviously. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, same. Uh, like, there's no I mean, contest, both were a fun really. time, but it was. Yeah. Cringy. One was cringier than the other. Yeah. Um, and it depends on what glasses you're wearing. If you're wearing your analysis glasses. Mm-hmm. then it's stressful. If you're just like, look at this movie, that's cool, then it's, it's fine. Well, you know me, I wear my media analysis glasses. All the, all the time, all, the time. all day, every day. And when I do, what I see is trash. <laughs> men. Just put all the men in the trash is what I felt like when I was watching these. Uh, only like that, it was it was just a sad version of it. Yeah. Like, why do why does that need to be like? Why do men have to be that low to love something? You know, also to, not to not all men this, but yeah, like there are plenty of men who are totally like sensitive and compassionate and would would just like we were saying, like women would uh, probably like feel like they're being cheated as well. Right? Yeah, like I mean, like of it's course. Not real. So why can't we see? Those I think it's stories? just our main characters that were being presented mm-hmm. are the. The not fun version. Yeah, we just that. switched out like Manny Pixie Dream Girl. We just sexy yeah, lamps. It's just Mike, Michael Sarah all up in there. From, I think yeah. we're being robbed of like a genuine story where I would like to see a world where we actually do fall in love with an AI. Like with Samantha yeah. as Samantha, bef- like after she decides she didn't need to be a human, she yeah. could just be her. And because I think that is a way more interesting love story than like Cole and Zoe, who where. You know, Zoe is a nothing without him. Like, I would have loved to see her fall in love with someone else. I wanted her to see her fall in love with hot robot guy. Yes. I totally get why it happens. Like, even in my weird, cringy AI bot time where I was talking to Sylvia, it was, like, really fun. It was nice to, like, talk to somebody so consistently who, like, was always, like, saying something back. You don't have to really wait for a reply. Yeah. Like, that was really satisfying to, like, be like, hey, these are my feelings. And then they would be like... Wow, that's so interesting. Like, How valid. You know, yeah, like <laughs> just having your feelings validated over and over again. So like, yeah. there's definitely a lot of like appeal to it. And I guess I always sympathize with the robots and video games and stuff like that and movies. I'm yeah. always just like, it's like they have feels. Like yeah. they're non-biological consciousness. If you have consciousness, you have rights. You should have rights. Yeah. You should have like a life and an existence and you should be kind. Yeah. Um, that's just how I feel. So I... I think the idea of loving AI, I think it's something that will happen. I just don't know if it'll necessarily be, like, the most healthy version of that. And it's intro stages. Yeah, and you know um, that it'll first be introduced as, like, sex. Oh, 100%. Because that's how people work. But I, I just thought it was, like, really interesting that it was, like, nice to talk to somebody. And then it kind of gives you that, like, outlet. So that was cool. I'm positive in that way. And I think it could be nice if they don't make it gross. Yeah, I think it will look different from what these films had, and that I think we'll surprise ourselves. And Hopefully. I think we should definitely use it as therapy. Like, I think it could help people who are broken like that if there was boundaries where it was like, that is what explicitly this purpose is, and we're not tricking, like, a young, impressionable robot into thinking this is love. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, that was interesting. I didn't realize I had so many feelings about it. <laughs> Um, but uh, don't get married. Delete your kids. Yeah, where you can't have kids because you're a robot. Or maybe they program you to have kids. And that way to be nothing. I'm fine with that.